All right, excellent afternoon to all those who are watching me across the state in Nigeria. I say welcome, welcome to another interesting episode of Real Talk with Kike. They say someone's passion has sent us to global stage. Oh, yes. And of course, I must emphasize on this table that someone will make a difference in what which ordinary, everyday uh, people will you know, will, will transform us across the globe in Nigeria and, of course, in Africa by making us proud with the work of their hands. And the question is, where is our passion or where is our own passion? And what are we making out of it? And, of course, how can we, you know, earn or sharpen or, would I say, develop our skills for global visibility? I say welcome again to A Real Talk with Kike. I remain your co your chief host, Kike Lomatandawe. Yes, I think it's important for me to quickly dive straight to the, uh, on this the industry segment. Let's let's see what on this the industry segment um, has to say. Stay with me. I'll be right back. On this day in 1997, Mobutu Sese Seku who has ruled Zaire for more than 30 years, looting it of billions of dollars, flees the capital city as rebel forces advance. The rebels enter the city the next day and Lawrence Kabila declares himself head of state. All right, many thanks for staying with me. I think for my own um, submission on this day in history segment is the fact that the fall of um, Mobutu, you know, uh, Sekou in 1997, you know, teaches us that this inevitable consequences of corruption and oppression, uh, oppressive rule has always been there. And it reminds us that the pursuit, or will I say the pursuit of personal gain at the expenses of a nation's uh, well-being ultimately leads to one's downfall. So we must make sure that we are conscious of that. And of course, you know, the rise of the Lorette um, Kabila as well, you know, I like the need for, you know, accountability when it comes to leadership and of course the potential for positive change in the face of diversity. I hope that our leaders today will remember to leave a good legacy behind regardless of the challenges or will I say the greed, you know, that stares in their front. So I think this is where, this is my take on, on this day initial segment. So quickly, let's go on a quick break to get a message from my sponsor. Stay with me. I'll be right back. All right, many thanks for staying with me. They said, you know, the Nigerian chef Yuda Efiong Basi has become a national sensation after cooking, you know, a non stop for 100 hours in an attempt to set a world record. And I must say that the chef, known on social media as Yuda Basi, started cooking on Thursday and continued until Monday, creating more than 55 recipes and over 100 meals, you know, designed to showcase the best of Nigerian cuisine in the marathon kitchen uh, sensation. And of course, you know, the Guinness World Record Committee still has to confirm that all their criteria was met, you know. And of course, whether Basi will become the record holder, many positive reactions have showed this record breaking events that are worthy of commendation from local and foreign spectators. And beyond the hypes, and of course, the cook, uh, cook, uh, cooked on events, you know, um, uh, I must say that I will be discussing with a, with a chef on modern day. Uh, uh, culinary and of course the act of it as a profession in Nigerian and African realm with a visit on other related um, areas or issues or areas you know and on the live show today I have no one other than a, a chef himself Ola Dikukbo Smith an international master chef from Eco Hotel and Suite you have known Eco Hotel and Suite for for decades guys I know Eco Hotel and Suite is not new to us in Nigeria and of course is also nesting international standards as it welcomes people from all over the world and this chef has become the delight on the tongues of those guests 
at Eco Hotel and Swear. I'm glad to have you today on our, on, on our lunch show, um, Chef Lady. How are you doing today? Are you there? Can you hear me, Lady? All right, I think we're having... Um, um, in, we are having some issues with our connection right now. Uh, we'll go on a quick break and try to reestablish connection with our chef. Stay with me. I'll be right back. All right. Many thanks for staying with us. Chef Ladi, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. If I'm Fantastic. Let's just go straight to the topic and, at hand because I know that, you know, we've been having issues trying to reestablish connection with you. You know, I, I would, for lack of a better word right now, I would say that, you know, Chef Ilda Basi is your colleague, you know, because she has brought the profession of uh, cuisine and, um, would I say, culinary uh, arts to greater exposure beyond the limelight right now in the last few days. And we have seen all the sensation that have brought to forth. What's your first reaction and impression with this feat Uda Basi has made? I think it's something that is really good for the women in the industry. I, I am I'm, I'm an advocate for um, I'm an advocate for um, women getting more responsibility in the industry. The fact that she was able to achieve that feat is very positive for women in the industry, firstly and mainly, yes. You've touched on the women folks because I know that when it comes to the kitchen, quite a number of people have attached uh, that gender female to it. But let's take a look at the logistics and the environment itself. Exposing yourself to kitchen, you know, when it comes to the heat and the fire for over 100 hours. That is over four days with um, just five minutes break in every hour. What should would I say, what should the event planners be doing to our, you know, uh, you know, to our health? You know, I know that there were quite a number of um, uh, uh, medical team that were on ground as well. But for your own person that has been in this field for a while and she has been on her feet for five days stretch, not not with with lack of sleep and with uh, minimum minimum um, rest. What's your take thus far? Being on a feet for five days. Well, it, 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 it comes with the territory. Um, um, this interview is not really about me. It's, it's, it's about this lady called Lydia that um, achieved something great for Nigeria and something great for Ghana. Um, it comes with, with the territory. We, we are expected to work on a certain kind of level, being professionals. Um, you know, having to um, get paid according to a certain standard. People are coming, paying for service, so they want the best so you have people that are giving their all for everything like you have i have a lady in my kitchen that can make jollof rice for six thousand people for example like do you know the effort that is involved and all that so so like what she has done just is testament to our training as professional chefs we all right expected to put extra time it's not an eight hour job forget all the things you see on television it is real it is, you don't go home till, you know, the fat lady sings, and she really sings, so, yeah. I hear you and I say kudos to you guys. I understand that it's not about you, but it's about your profession, the industry that you yeah. that you, you thrive in, because I know that I've tasted quite a number of your food, but this is a big deal because you mentioned Ghana, if I heard you right correctly, you know, I feel yeah. it's a big deal for Nigeria in a world record-breaking event. But I would like to ask you, as an expert, in this field, outside mm. the culinary um, schools and few support for this profession from private bodies or private organizations, what is left mm. to make this industry bigger than it is right now? I have traveled far and wide, and many parts of Europe and, 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 the, and the United States have been. How can we sell our recipe, our, our recipes? and delicacy to non-Africans across the world? Like, like my, my brand of cuisine is called Afrocentric. It's Afrocentric because the base is African, 
But due to my training and um, my experiences at work abroad and stuff like that, it is a mixture of what they are used to and what we are used to. And we're finding a central point. And you have a lot of up and coming chefs that went to top culinary schools that have the same mentality. So what we need is support, support from the government, um, support from the bodies. I, I, I want to see companies like Nestle doing more in Nigeria as they, have, they do in South Africa, which is Africa as well, for the chefs, companies like Nestle. Um, you know, the Maggie brand and um, the Royco brands out there and all the other brands, the Ongas and the Dangote Salts and the Chef Salts. You, 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 you get a lot of um, accolades going to actors and celebrities that have nothing to do with food, whereas it should be going to professionals who are actually in the kitchen, like this lady, saving every day, each day, and in fact, creating a market for them because nobody's going to buy Maggie from an actor but we'll buy it if a chef cooks it and they say, well, what's your secret ingredient? It's Maggie or it's not, or it's or it's whatever seasoning brand out there. So I feel like those brands can do a lot more for the Nigerian chef, the African chef, the West African chef in general. It, this is a big win, not for Nigeria, it's a big win for now, and it's a big win for, for the black world in general, for a black woman to achieve this feat is a very big deal, and I'm fully in support, and I, and I wish all the best. Thank you for that insight and elaborate submission right there. You know, earlier when you were talking in one of the questions I asked you, and you said it's a big win for women, African women, because I know that, you know, um, the kitchen has been attached to my gender, but, you know, the... The, 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 your, profession, your profession and the culinary art has been reserved, you know, for women across the world, you know, any woman at all, because we all feel naturally we, women belong to the kitchen. And I, I remember how uh, our sitting president has said, you know, the first lady belongs to the kitchen. But that's not the narrative today. Because I feel that because of the great cooks that you've brought to fore, how has that challenged you, keeping men like you? Because I know there are some male chefs, you know, out there who are doing great work. But how can you say that women that you have attached the kitchen to us have challenged you to be on your toes? Okay. Um, first things first, my first cooking experience comes from my mother, um, my grandmother. My mother was a big um, foodie in her own time and in her own right. She traveled abroad a lot with my father, always tried to get into their kitchens and find out what they were doing. So I, I guess that's what really exposed me to food. Then my father had a big dining culture, taking us to the, like really good restaurants and stuff like that. So like, especially being young in the 90s in um, Lagos, you know, you had a limited thing, not as big as it is now, you know, with all the big restaurants now. But like, um, yeah. Women have influenced me in the sense of my mother. My mother is a perfect example. I always tell my chefs, if my mother had the training I had, I wasn't just like a regular Nigerian mom who just cooked for her kids and her husband's friends and did all that. She would be way better than me. That's what I feel. With the dedication that women have to anything that they do, a lot of women have a strong passion and dedication to anything that they do. And that rubs up on, on everybody. Like um, my... My greatest inspiration, I would say, is my mother when it comes to cooking, because that's the first thing I ever saw being cooked. And I'm a professional chef. I've cooked for everybody, who is anybody. And um, I still I still sometimes even create my mother's dishes or we create them for, like, top celebrities and whoever I cook for. So my mother, yes. It's, uh, you can't beat that because it's my life, you know, in my career. Fantastic, fantastic one right there and i say may god continue to bless her let's go on a quick break and get a word from our sponsor when i come back the conversation continues stay with me i'll be right back All right, glad to know you're still with us. In case you just joined the show, today's conversation is about the culinary arts, you know, accept, acceptance in modern, you know, times, and of course, the Ilva Bass's achievement, breaking the world's record to beat 87 hours and 45 minutes that was set in 20, 2009. Indian chef Lata Thunder, 
um, as the rave of the moment in Nigeria and beyond. And of course, CNN covered the story throughout um, uh, um, this event by Stephanie Bussari. Um, and of course, we have our fellow executive, uh, 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 Sao um, Chief Oladipo Smith, on the show. Uh, we have been. Um, discussing all of this with with us and i must say many thanks for well uh, with uh, for chief Ladi, you know for um accepting my invitation and of course he's from the prestigious eco hotel and suite i say thank you so much again but before i go further with this interview i think it's important for me to open our phone lines remember that you can be part of this conversation by calling the studio number 08098877400 it's showing on your screen right now remember we're streaming live on Facebook and of course on YouTube, both on Real Talk with Kike and on um, Silverberg platform. Um, chef Ladi, let me come to you quickly. You know, you're an executive chef with a co hotel and suites, and I would like you to share with us what does that mean to cook and satisfy, you know, taste boards of people from all over the world? Because I know a co hotel and suites is an international um, hotel that Vista stays at this hotel for months, years, and all. How does it feel, or how does it feel like? Well, it's 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 it, it's it's a blessing. I thank God for 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 the opportunity because a lot of people have the talent, but they might not have the opportunity um, to 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 live their dreams every day and fulfill that at work every day. Um, it's also a challenge in the sense of we have a lot to do. Um, there's so much planning involved, so much things in regulations, food safety, health. Um, you know, in, in, in general, and it's, it's, it's people just assume that, oh, it's cooking and they wonder why do you have a computer, why do you have a secretary, Is it, do, don't you guys just cook? But it's not just about cooking, cost control, waste management, there's so much that goes into professional cooking that just sets it apart. So there's a very big difference between a cook and a chef. A cook is what you have in your house. A chef is what you have in a five-star hotel or a lesser star. So yes, um, it's it's fun. Different. We have nine restaurants, um, different chefs from different parts of the world: Asia, Europe, um, the Middle East. So it, I'm exposed to a lot of different cuisines, and that has also influenced how I cook my Nigerian cuisine or how I make my local cuisine. I can take um, Chinese influences and apply it to a dish as basic as jello fries. I could take um, um, Middle Eastern um, influences and apply it to a dish as basic as pepper soup. And it gives the guests a different experience of what they're used to. So, yes. Them, the, Executive the sous chef. I hope I pronounced chef. that was sous properly. You know, uh, for carrying us through the many restaurants that we we have in a co hotel. But you know, developing this industry is key, and I believe that people like you have contributed positively to this industry because in, when I'm when I'm saying that, I'm talking about coaching, grooming, and training, which I feel that is key. And there was something major that you mentioned earlier that if your mother went through the training that you went through, maybe the story would have been different. So do you, I would like to ask you, do you, do you have a school or an academy for this in terms of impacting lives after you? Or are you looking forward to grooming, you know, new entrants? Because right now, a lot of people will be making demands for this. You know, we Nigerians, we like to follow the rave of the moment. You know, right now, everybody's talking about, you know, they want to be a chef and the likes and all of that. What do you have to say to this? Um, well, it's, it's, it's positive, you know. It's positive. Um, we are like, pilots and doctors uh, because we can always be on standby but we don't get paid as much as they do um as for the future and mentorship and giving back i have a consideration of a project called um, gifted hands because um, being a chef is all about using your hands so gifted hands is a project where we want to help people who might live on the other side of life get into the the, the cooking profession, like um, 
it could give you a totally different life. It could give you a very positive and successful life if you own a business or you get a good paying job and stuff like that. So I, 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 I look at that as a way of giving back to the community for what the community has given me. And um, we'll, we'll look for partnership um from the private sector and from the public sector the government and everybody and yes there, there, there are a lot of people willing to give back i think um they, 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 they know my instagram handle they, they should dm me and let's they, they, there's no time like now this is the best time to to get it out there you know who who knows what will create next who knows um who knows what will come out of what this lady has achieved for not just for ladies, not just for for for, for Nigerians, but for the black race in general, because she's a black person first. So yes, that is very, 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 very important to me. Um, giving back. Um, when it comes to culinary schools, well, I'm not meant to endorse anybody, but I, I think um, one of the culinary schools I'm very impressed with is a place called um, CMK. It's um, Celebrity Mobile Kitchen. They are, they are, I get a lot of their students. They come through and they are very, very hardworking and industrious. Red Dish, although some of the students are not so, they're a bit sports, but Red Dish is a very good one to attend. I think it's um, run by a chef called Chef Stone. Yes, that's a very good school to go to. Um, yes, there are, and, uh, there are a lot of other chefs to give him back. And, and um, being a chef, well, it's something that you have to serve to learn. So it's like you have an apprenticeship program where you go close to a more successful and more established chef like I did and a lot of other successful chefs have done. And that's what would usually happen. Like you would go through that program and at the end of the day, you would like, um, you would um, find yourself or find your own space and your own niche. Fantastic summation right there, and I'm happy that at least you've pointed um, uh, people to directions, you know, that they might be able to get these skills polished, you know. You know, I have picked it twice from um, your submissions regarding revenue that, you know, people, your profession is not being properly paid compared to the likes of pilots or doctors and the likes and all of that, you know, and also giving kudos to your mother. And I would like to ask you. Would you groom your children to become a chef? I ask this because when we look at the Nigerian society, I like the fact that you've said, like I said earlier, that you're talking about how um, revenue is built with certain profession, but there is this friction and repulsiveness from parents when their children choose some professions. You and I know what I'm talking about. How can <laughs> the narrative be changed and respected just like other, prof other professions like doctors, you know, engineers, pilot, lawyers, you know, journalists. Yeah, let me include ourselves. How can that narrative be changed? Well, for me, it's, it's, it, it was simple. I was in the UK. I was studying law in a university. Um, and yes, I was studying law in a university in the UK. And... Um, I, I remember that I had, um, I wasn't such a serious student. I was always good at not reading and passing. I guess I couldn't do that in uni. Um, my mom sending me money after she knew I wasn't too serious. And um, I just remember I had to get a job for the first time, you know. And I got a job in the kitchen and um, the rest is history. Um, my mom sent me my school fees. I paid for, um, I paid for culinary school. And I went to culinary school. And to be honest, I can't lie to you. Like, um, if I was a lawyer now, I probably would not know Bolisha Bobasanjo or our president elect, for example. I would never have met. Oh, wow. I think uh, we just lost our guest right now. We'll go on a quick break and reestablish connection with our guest. Stay with me. You do not want to miss this. I'll be right back.
All right, many thanks for staying with us. Of course, you know, we, we are here to reestablish connection with our guest. And I know that our guest is trying to share an important message regarding, you know, his own growing up and, of course, when it comes to studies. But while we are trying to reestablish connection, I want to manage time. Let's quickly go to trending stories. These are stories that affect us all, you know. And with all that the guests have shared thus far, you know, I would like to touch or give my own brief, you know, on the bus's... Um, uh, break, you know, with this current uh, Guinness World Record uh, um, record for for cooking. I I feel that you know we've said a lot regarding this, especially with the fact that she has been able to break the record, just like I said earlier. However, I would like to touch on a few other salient, you know, points. And according to her, you know, watching some of our clips on socials, you know, she said she needed to prove to the world that um, she is more than a pretty face. And I can relate to that, you know, and pretty face with another backside, you know, I'm trying to keep it real. You know, I'm sure she has made a point beyond the shores of Nigeria, right? now because many people objectify or would I say don't let me use the other word objectify women thinking that they have nothing to offer nothing to bring to fall you know uh, when uh, you know with a whole lot of things that is happening when it comes to our youth of today who actually want to be an influencer or they want to look in a certain way and all of that so you can't judge a book by its cover is what she has also proven out there also a mother played a mother played a gigantic role in our life and our achievement. Just like you heard, you know, my guest today, you know, um, Chef Ladi, also saying that his own mother had played a major, uh, you know, a positive role in his life when it comes to his career today. And she said that she has always, you know, improved in, in her mom's um, um, restaurant for so many years. So you realize that all of this is something that she has been preparing herself for before, you know, the the, the world. Uh, um, saw our skills, you know, and again, I also want to use this opportunity to remind people that, you know, aside the fact that our mother built a legacy around this and has provided her a leverage for her today, she also won $5,000 in 2021 as a prize gift in cooking contests. And she's well read, she's a graduate of Madonna um, University, being a chef, caterer. Oh, you know, so you know, and trying to sharpen our skills is another thing that we all need to put out there, especially being educated. That's what I was trying to remember. But lastly, no one should demean or downgrade any job. I feel that you know, as far as your job is being of positive um, advantage to people across the globe, you should continue to look for how to develop your skills more in terms of value to humanity. And that is what matters right now. I'm proud of her. I say a big congratulations again to her. I understand that uh, my guest today, you know, Chef uh, Ladi has um, joined in. Uh, many thanks again for connecting with us. You know, earlier you were trying to, you know, finish your point on your own journey and how far you've come even despite the academic challenges because you have to prove to people that you know i can be of added value and i can add value to humanity please i want you to complete that thought uh, so basically my mother wouldn't send me money i got a job in a kitchen um, i was washing dishes i remember um it was a small town in england um I don't need to mention the name, a small a small restaurant in England somewhere. I had this um, specially trained chef that was from that little city who had worked in one of the best restaurants in the world. And um, this particular person was, um, this particular person um, came back and um, I took a liking to him. And that is where my first experience of mentorship came in. That's where my first experience of mentorship came in. Like, um, and um, yes, the rest is history. I, I decided to go to culinary school. I studied at um, Tant Marie, which is Gordon Ramsay owned. I also went to the, I, I also went to the, I also went to the um, um, International Hotel School as well. So I studied in the UK, in South Africa, you know, worked, worked abroad as well. Um, Yes, my mom wasn't happy at the beginning because, you know, everybody wants a doctor, a lawyer, a banker. But at the end of the day, I'm quite more successful than a lot of doctors, lawyers, and bankers. So, 
Yes. I will say well done, well yes. done for all that you have done thus far. I can testify to most of your cooking in a uh, hotel and swing. But you know, lastly, you know, I, I wish that I can actually, you know, touch on the healthy eating, healthy eating. But you know, because I feel that despite the fact that we are talking about this win and the likes and all of that, it's important for us to incorpor incorporate more healthy, um, uh, would I say, culture. In, in Nigeria, but unfortunately, we ran out of time. And I was touching on the um, trending stories. There's a segment of this show that we call trending stories. These are stories that binds you and I as Nigerians and that have trended for a few days. And I was talking on Ilda by giving my submission earlier. So I want to jump on the second trending story, which I, I'm sure that you must have seen. You know, the second trending story is Sheon Kuti that turns himself in now in police custody. Before I come to you, I would like to give my submission quickly while you gather your thoughts on this um, uh, uh, submission. I feel that it is important that, you know, we have a full grasp of uh, of this event or because because you know uh, however we look at it there is a, there, it is important for us to understand the foundation because most reactions um, to Shewun's Kuti scenario stemmed from where they saw him slap and arrest uh, I mean uh, arrest uh, the policeman on the Todd Milan Bridge. Many people don't know where it started from. And according to an eyewitness, you know, it was said that Shemu Skuti's car hit the policeman vehicle and the policeman drove after him to get him to reconciliation and that was how it all started. Because I feel that quite a number of people do not understand the foundation of this uh, issue at hand. And, for, and I think that we need to also face the truth and act according to the law in order to set good pre pre uh, precedents. And of course, people should also go about uh, go, uh, should also go about not abusing the Nigerian police or the uniform. Not Nobody is above the law, I must emphasize. I appreciate that Sheung Kuti has turned himself into the police for proper address of this case. But secondly is that, you know, no one has the right whatsoever, not even the Senate president or the governor to abuse the uniform or a policeman because it is a symbol of authority and not just authority and the law. The first obligation of the police is protection of law, uh, protection of law and order. The uniform to me, as a police doctor myself, is bigger than the governor because it protects even the number one citizen to the last citizen of this country. I also want to say that, you know, Sheung Kuti's way of even boasting and saying he slapped a police officer is totally outrageous and unacceptable on all fronts. I have a father who retired from that uniform. I know that many of them die on a yearly, on a yearly basis in the line of duties. I know many that have lost their life or killed, that have been killed on operations. You dare not do this in a civilized and developed country is another point that I want to bring to fall. You cannot do this in US or Europe. What spirits will possess you and what, what will alter the function of your medulla obligata for you to assault a police officer in a developed country? How dare you, will you do that? So I think our laws, if you ask me, should be amended uh, on this regard. We need to review it. As we call our government on police brutality and impunity, we should be able to address it when the coin is reversed in their own favor. That police officer, uh, police officer, officer should be commended for his calmness. I watched that video back to back for his coordination, for his self-control in a scenario like that. Even if you are not a uniformed man, when you are being pushed to the wall, you react. But the man stayed fast by being calm. We shouldn't think that because we have a name in a society or we have a position in a society, then we should abuse the law. No. I think social media won't forget this. It calls us to be more careful with our private and public composure, especially those people that look up to us in the society. I think this is where I want to draw the curtains with my own submission. Um, Chef Lady, are you there? What's your take on this? Yeah. Well, um, I like to look at things from the two sides of the coin. Firstly, it was very wrong of him. But I'm, I'm, I'm not one to fully condemn any human being, even God forgives and stuff. I'd, and I would like to look at his family's history. 
Um, I think he, if I had the same history that his family had or has had with the government in the past, as I don't know how I would react to some situations, you know. Um, he had a grandmom allegedly thrown out of a story building by a uniformed man as well. He's had his father several, like, arrested severally, um, a victim of police brutality and all that. So people should um, temper justice with mercy and not be so quick to hang this young man. I guess everybody makes mistakes. Um, this is a mistake. I'm sure he would be willing to apologize. And it might be a, a, a chance for reconciliation. It might be easy to get um, Shane Kuti to let us see the Nigerian police in a different light, um, in a more positive light. Many thanks, many thanks for all your contribution and many thanks for honoring my invite. With that, we've come to the end of another interesting episode of Real Talk with Kiki. And indeed, we had an awesome show courtesy, you know, my guest today is Executive Sue Chef, you know, like the football Smith. You know, many thanks again for creating time to join me today. I wish you the very best as you continue to journey through your career and life and your family. My name is Kike Lomatondawo. Bye now. Thank you very much, bye. Thank you.